Hello there and welcome, in this video I'm going to talk about what I consider to be the best crusade relics in the whole game. Now crusade relics are those items that you find during crusade mode by defeating certain enemy armies, but in a few rare cases you can also get them from certain loot containers as you explore during normal mode. Unfortunately, there is really no way of knowing what the item you choose will become whenever you choose a decree to enchant it. There are many different ways you can enchant these items, resulting in different gears with different effects. So the purpose of this guide is to help you in picking the right choice. So let's get started. So the first one would be the Clemency of Shadows ring. This ring will grant the equipped character a rather huge aura, in this case the yellow one here, that will not only grant every single one of your party members pets included inside the aura an extra attack of opportunity per round. Not only that, but if any attack of opportunity is a critical hit, the enemy will be automatically staggered with no save. Staggered is a very powerful effect, as you might already know from playing a character like Darren, who is often staggered during the first round in combat from his Oracle Curse. The main benefit of staggered is that it will limit the enemy to just a standard action, so the enemy will not be able to take full round actions, this means something like being able to full attack, so basically we are limiting the enemy to just a single attack, no matter how many attacks they might have. Now this item also has a third somewhat amusing effect, if one of your party members falls unconscious, it's going to summon a giant spider for 3 rounds. The interesting thing about this effect is that for some reason, whenever you go invisible, it's also going to summon a giant spider. Here it is. And it even works for other party members. Another spider now from having Camellia go invisible. Now I imagine this is either a bug or an oversight, so I suppose it's going to get fixed, eventually that is. You can get this item by finding the Stone of Ghostly Pathways item in Crusade mode and choosing the decree to enchant it. Be sure to choose the Ring option and then the Priests of Norgober option to get the Clemency of Shadows ring in the way we want it. One of the first Crusade relics you'll be able to get in the game is the Bane of Spirit ring. You can get it by enchanting the Broken Phylactery of Stevanius the Rotem into a ring. The effects are simply huge. First you get a few bonus to saving throws against some very annoying effects. True that you also get a minus against other effects, but in the case of poison, paralyzing and movement impairing, you can simply cast delay poison and freedom of movement to become immune to them. Now the main benefit of this ring is the secondary effect. As a free action, as a free action, you can lose HP equal to half your level to grant the target creature a plus two bonus to attack rolls and also, and this is where it gets really good, transform their damage type into force for one whole round. This effect is basically insane. You can turn all your damage into force damage. The special thing about force is that nothing in the game is immune or resists force damage. So all your attacks, including secondary effects of your attacks from elemental enchantments, are going to become force damage, meaning your blows will hit full damage to the enemy no matter what. Because this is a free action, there is really no cost to using it at all besides the low hit point loss that you can easily heal. Remember that free actions are unlimited and can be used with any other actions, including full round actions and swift actions. To show you how powerful this ring can be, here it is in action on unfair. So let us activate our ring. And just look at that, it is so powerful that it can even deal full damage to annoying swarm enemies such as locust swarms and also tick swarms, who are by default immune to physical blows. But because we converted all our damage into force, just look at that, we are able to deal complete and full damage to any enemy in the game. Just look at it go. Now, another very powerful crusade relic is the Malander's Insult Short Sword. You can get this item as soon as chapter 3, I believe, by finding the Crest of the Fallen Knight and enchanting it into a short sword, by also choosing the Shame the Fallen Knights option. The best thing about this item is that it is going to enhance all your physical attacks with 3d6 unholy damage on hit for 10 minutes. Now, it is important to note that this 10 minutes can actually become 24 hours with the Greater Enduring Mythic ability, so basically, you can have a character with a permanent 3d6 unholy damage to hit, 
and most enemies in the game do not have unholy resistance at all, including demons and other evil foes. You don't even need to have the sword actually equipped in your main slots, all it takes is to have the sword in any of your slots. As you can see here, this is enough to use the ability, which will then increase the power of our dual wielded scimitars. What's also great about this ability is that the damage will be added on top of other sources of damage that your character might have, especially the ones that are added separately to your character, as you might already know from my Elemental Barrage and Genie Kind combo video. So all those elemental hits will also be boosted separately by the Malander's Insult special ability. Not only that, but other bonuses such as the damage from Crusader's Edge. Overall a very powerful item that you can get quite early in the game. Another one of my favorite Crusade relics is the Devouring Lust Metamagic Rod. You can get this as soon as Chapter 3 by finding the attractive Impulse Crusade Relic and enchanting it into a Metamagic Rod by choosing the Consecrate the Attractive Impulse to Calistria option. This rod is simply amazing, it will automatically maximize any spell of any level up to 6 times per day and also change the damage into Unholy, thus allowing you to bypass a lot of enemy resistances or immunities without the need to get the Ascended Element Mythic ability. For a caster character it is in your best interest to get this as soon as possible, especially if you are a Merged Angel or a Merged Lich. Alright, now let us talk about the Web Strider Padded Armor. This relic comes from the Altar of the First Retriever item, after you choose to turn it into a Padded Armor, and also cleanse the gear of the first retriever. The special part about this armor, while it is true that it does not give you much armor class, it actually increases your dexterity by a plus 2 morale bonus. Morale bonuses to ability points are extremely rare, so if you want your dexterity based character to have as high dexterity as possible, I recommend you pick this armor. One more very powerful crusade relic is the Saori's Beauty, Headband. Not only does he grant your character a plus 6 to Charisma and Wisdom, so perfect for characters like Clerics and Oracle, but, and this is the big part, it's also going to give the wearer and all their allies in a 10 feet area the effects of the Eliad Spellcaster feat. Eliad Spellcaster feat is a teamwork feat that will increase the character's spell penetration by a plus 2 for all other characters around them that also have the feat, every single one of our characters that is close to Darren will count for purposes of this feat. So basically, your caster will be able to get quite a lot of spell penetration without investing in any of the spell penetration feats, such as spell penetration and mythic spell penetration. I believe this relic in particular can be achieved during chapter 4 in the Demon City. So it is a rather unique case because you don't get it from a crusade army battle. Last but not least, let us talk about the Treacherous Flame Gloves. These gloves can only be attained during Chapter 5 by acquiring the Baphomet's Fire Relic and enchanting it into gloves and also choosing the Medium option. The special thing about them is that they can make any enemy you land a sneak attack against vulnerable to fire for a whole round without a save. An enemy that is vulnerable against an element will take 50% more damage from that element, so it is quite powerful. Not only that, but it's also going to add a stacking penalty to enemy saves and even increase the damage they take by an additional 2d6 fire. Alright, so that was it. Is there any other good crusade relic item that you think I missed on this guide? Please be sure to comment down below. Thank you for watching and please remember to like and subscribe to help the channel if you can. See you next time, friends!